Hey everyone. So MBA or not? Clearly that's one big question on all your minds. Should we do an MBA or not? Um you're thinking it's expensive, you're thinking it's 2 years of uh, working life that you'll have to actually, you know, give up in order to do an MBA. You're thinking what is the real benefit that I'm going to get from here? So today I'm at the Masters Union campus in Gurgaon. to meet with one of the edtech leaders called Pratham Mittal who's the founder of Masters Union and he's entrepreneurial he's set up something which is very different from a traditional mba college or an institution i've been to one i went to xlri jamshedpur so i could see a difference between what i studied at my mba education and what pratham set out to do at masters union and let's explore how he's managing to get average salaries of about 29 to 29 lakhs this is last year apparently this year is 30 plus so i won't spill all the beans i'm going to take you right into this but before that remember this is also available exclusively on spotify as a podcast and the full length version of this you can watch and listen to on spotify you just need to press the subscribe button when you hit skill up with chat chat And meantime, let's meet Pratham Mittal. Hey, Pratham. How are you? <laughs> good. I'm good. Good to be here at your campus. Yeah. Too. Welcome to Masters Union. Really, what a lovely space you've put together. Thank you. Yeah, this is uh, this is like right at the entry of Gurgaon. Yeah. Um, so there's some traffic outside, but uh, inside it's it's nice and cozy. Nice and cozy, but surrounded by offices. Yeah, yeah. I think in this building alone, there are some 21 companies. Uh, right from I think your Bank of America, Gartner, they're all like right upstairs. I I so appreciate that because I studied at Jamshedpur at XLR, you know, and there was just okay. one company <laughs> there. So I so appreciate being an MBA student, being able to do projects at different companies. You know, we were always running to Tata Steel, for instance, to do everything. But the thing I want to talk to you upfront sure. is the twenty nine point one two lakhs that's being talked about. Everybody, all students are talking about. Which is this MBA institute? that delivers an average of 29.12 and, and that was last year correct so a what is the number now <laughs> and where is all of this coming from you know it's it's fortunate and unfortunate that mbas has become about placements only i think one of the major criteria that people look at when they're looking at mba schools is what kind of roi they will get on their investment to their mba program people actually do calculations yes they then figure out yes. that hey listen this is the fees You know, this is my foregone income yeah. for the year, and this is what my predicted package is going to be. Um, and one mistake we made, or I don't know if it was a mistake, maybe not, is that we released our numbers um, along with what kind of work experience you have. So, if you are a fresher, what can you expect your average salary to be? If you are a five-year experienced student, what can you expect your average salary to be? And now people are doing all those even detailed calculations. At the end of the day, it all comes down to our practitioners who are teaching. Right, so Masters Union is all about masters, uh, and a lot of our practitioners work upstairs. They teach what they recruit for, mm. right? A lot of the courses that are taught here are courses that new recruits do when they join these companies. Okay, so right. they're training their employees at your cost, essentially, <laughs> okay. uh, and at least not at their own cost, <laughs> uh, which is what colleges are for. Sure, of right. course, like a finishing school. Like a finishing school. So, to a baaton ki ek baat, this would be uh, the reason we were able to crack. This year, of course, um, you know, markets have been very tough on us, as you know. Uh, but I think we've done all right. I think we've increased our average by around ten, fifteen percent. So I think we'll probably close the year at around thirty-three, thirty-four. You'll know uh, in a couple of weeks. But we're talking about the reasons to do an MBA, and we've got audiences here who are saying, "Should I? Shouldn't I?" Because you know, back in back in the day, I did an MBA. Back in the day, doing an MBA was the the thing to do if you weren't doing. a medical yeah. or an engineering or a law degree then you just did Correct. an mba today the the tech world has broken this idea of you know that an mba is a mandatory uh, yeah. sort of qualification absolutely and we're talking you walked in with you know tech background startup background education yeah i'm not an mba myself yeah you're not, you're not an mba yourself but you're from wharton mm-hmm. school but you decided to set up a b school So my question before saying you know should we do an MBA or not why did you decide to set up a B school in India we really let our students down with the quality of education we provide uh, if you compare indian schools with schools abroad i think we have a huge distance to cover number 2 i think education has not changed in 5000 years right think about it let's go back 
to the time of Nalanda or Aristotle or Plato, right? They taught exactly the same way as we teach today. A teacher would come in front of the classroom. The teacher would say some stuff out loud. The students would take notes. And then two months later, the students would be tested on those notes. That has not changed. So you're saying there's no classroom where teachers teach in the same manner. There are practitioners coming in. And so talk a little bit about what is it? A medical college is always situated next to a medical hospital. Students who enroll into medical colleges, they do OPD from year one. They are in the industry from year one. They don't have to wait five years and then get a job and then start applying their learnings. M Master's Union is essentially a medical college uh, wearing a business suit. Okay, that's a clever way of putting yeah. it. Up. So you're making, a, you're building a practitioner. But tell us about, you know, I met some students today on my way in here and they were talking about the different hands-on projects that they do and, you know, how somebody actually worked with an Ola driver and sort of helped them change their business model. So learning. So when they're saying, should I do an MBA or not? I'm, I'm constantly thinking about their question. Should I do an MBA or not? And this one's different. What will I go through as an experience? So it's a one year long program, right? And our program is divided into eight terms. And in each term, students are supposed to build a new business. Okay. So in term one, they all build an e-commerce store. In just one term? In six weeks. One term is six, six weeks. Six weeks from start to finish. From zero to finish. It's a sprint. We call these sprints where students will, in term, teams of five or six, they will build an e-commerce store. And they have some mentorship to do that? Yes, of course. I mean, they have they have workshops. They have people coming in and, you know, helping them through that project. But they have six weeks to build it. And at the end of the day, they are graded on the revenue. They're graded on the number of people who they engage with. They're graded on their website. Okay, hey, wait. They create revenue in six weeks? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, in fact, in total, and total revenue of the study teams was more than two and a half crores. And this is all, this is all like documented revenue, like money in the bank. Amazing. In and six all, weeks. These are all freshers. They probably have a couple of years experience. Yeah, most of them this. have like two, three years of experience. But, you know, you're standard MBA students, essentially. But this is how we sort of want to break it to them. Hey, listen, building a business is not that hard. It is hard, but it, it can be hard, done. It is hard, but we will but we'll it can be done. train you. Yeah. So in six weeks, most people have revenue. So we had people selling green stationery. We had people building brands around um, picture frames and selling those picture frames online. You know, there was a company called Berryly and they were selling uh, berries, dried berries, but in a branded fashion, right? Because they realized there's a white space in the market. No one is doing it that well. So that's term one, a drop shipping project. Then what do they do next? In term two, everyone builds a YouTube page of their own. You're putting in competition for me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so term. all the students become influencers. See, the thing is that tomorrow's marketing is not going to be through, you know, those four P's or on Facebook or Google. Those have become too expensive. It's content you, marketing. It's content marketing. Everything is about content. Content is king. Right. Right. So no better way to learn content marketing. Than in than school. Become, than become content marketers yourself. Amazing. Right. So, so they all set up YouTube pages. The six weeks is too short for yeah, a YouTube page. In fact, if you page, go to our right? website, you'll find all the channels there. And some students have tens of thousands of followers again in six weeks. Unbelievable. In six weeks. Again, we have workshops. We have, you know, people coming in. Uh, you know, helping them sort of see the larger picture and then they execute. I remember walking into an MBA institute as a fresh undergrad, learning operations research and uh, I had no idea what a factory shop floor look, looked like at all. Yeah. And I never ever went into one. So that, that practical application of the OR class actually didn't... Yeah, it's just that that's 40 hours wasted, essentially. <laughs> so uh, for us, it's incredibly important that whatever we teach is applicable in the real world immediately. Right. And that's how we sort of think about education. That's what we really believe the future is. Okay, but I'm still intrigued with this. So the second term, they've set up this social media platform, etc. What what next? They, they're only 12 weeks into the program. So in fact, they have a business three. that's earning money. They have their social media handles, which have got 10,000 followers. What's next? So in term three, we have a concept called Indowile Consulting, where again, for six weeks, students will consult with a local business. Right. So this local business could be a dhaba, could be an Uber driver or an Ola driver, um, could be could be a very small business, chai wala or a you know a thele wala. This is I think last year some of our students worked with an Ola driver, hmm. and they actually helped him map his route in such a way that he can optimize his revenue for the day. Right. So they told them, hey, 6 a.m. in the morning, go stand outside the airport. Uh, at 8 p.m., you know, be outside this restaurant, and if you follow this particular route throughout the day, you'll make maximum revenue. I mean, 
truthfully everything that you just said is amazing but this one hit home so hard mm. you know that if you can take a dhaba owner or a milk delivery guy yeah. or you know an old, a driver and genuinely see the result i mean how empowering is that absolutely and how real is that for them to be able to just pick up any of those skills and then say hey just the confidence when they walk out to say you know i won't be stranded on a road i know if if i have to do something i can and you know we are not doing some like magic here at the end of the day we are just telling them hey this is your assignment the students do it themselves you know it's it's just about putting them together and giving them a common goal they have a framework around them they have a little bit of leadership and mentorship available to them where they can or is it them learning entirely on their own so first of all they have the workshops so every term we have five or six 20 hour long workshops or courses right and so they are mentored by those workshop leaders right and these are all practitioners um who's in who we have mostly cxos coming in and teaching or maybe a professor from either a, you know a wharton or a harvard but also every week you have other kind of practitioners just coming onto the campus for one on one sessions for um, amas for uh mentorship so i think we have almost 120 impaneled mentors um yesterday we had gazal last week we had ashneer before that we had uh, rajan who like leads sequoia in india so i mean every term or in fact every day we have someone new coming in uh, you know as they say everyone needs a coach everyone needs a mentor and sometimes you never find one hmm. and you're sort of struggling and picking up pieces from books and podcasts and trying to pick up learnings but so early in the day if they have that one two three people who they can go to and learn from i think you know aside from everything else this one thing could just you know take be that elevator to the top floor for them here's how we think about it right so let's say we have 100 entrepreneurs coming in right and they'll say 100 things each right now i don't think that for each student each practitioner is going to have an impact but for each student even if one of those practitioners has an impact it's big impact it's a big impact right so one thing that somebody tells you or you hear or you overhear uh, i think can change your life so i'm looking going back to reasons to do an mba i'm saying that if you want the real world experience if you want to actually figure out what kind of business you want to do in future you want to pivot so this is the era of layoffs mm. Now, there are students out there who are watching this mm. program today who are at that juncture in their life where they are saying that do I want to pivot is there something else I want to do is an mba that career or that degree that will help them decide what to do next we have the three p's at masters union which is push pilot or pivot and these are the one of the three reasons you would do an mba So pushing is that you want to stay in the same industry in the same role but you want to push yourself yeah right, right. maybe you want to leap frog two or three positions yeah second is to pivot which you just pointed out that you know I've been in banking but I want to get into content marketing right and the third is that you want to pilot which is you want to start on your own start up okay right okay i and like so, this push pilot and pivot. pivot three reasons why you need to do, do an, an mba why you would you might would want, you to, want do to do an mba would you want to do an mba fair so when you come into masters union we figure out which of the three you are interested in okay right and then we build your pathway as per your choice and you know we spend the first couple of terms just soul searching just figuring out what is that we want because a lot of the times people do mba when they don't know what they want to do in life fair enough so talking about pilot now we did speak about push and that push is getting us 29.12 and 33 uh lakhs of salaries but what about those students did you have some students that actually went on and uh created their own startups yeah so in, in our first cohort which graduated last year in december we've had almost two companies that both have raised series or a seed round series a or a seed round one is a company called 8 Mm-hmm. uh which is an online social radio so think of it as a spotify meets like traditional indian radio uh, the other company that i'm super proud of is bullspree it's a guy called dharmil comes from ahmedabad uh and he started it um as a real money game for stock market so think of it as dream 11 meets zerodha so we have some amazing startups coming up um not just startups but also like real companies now because they have fundraised they've built their own teams in fact i think 8.network even came to recruit students Amazing. Um, you know, they're juniors. 
So I've got reason number four. If you want to find your co-founders, this may be a good thing to do. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. But talk about the support that you're giving these students that want to do a startup. So, so what are we doing here at Masters Union to help them? The very first thing is that you have to give them the confidence that they can start up. What we do is in very first term, we make them do the e-commerce store. And as soon as they finish with that, what they feel is that, oh, wow, listen, I, I could earn money in six weeks. So if I do this for six months, imagine what sort of outcomes I can get. Right? Second is a sense of community. Hmm. So here you get a community uh, of your first customers, your first investors, your first testers, your first mentors. And that really, I mean, you sort of are riding on their shoulders, you know, and you just become so much more confident of yourself. Third is like actual investment. Students at the end of the day actually get some sort of seed investments to continue running their business. So because we also have a master's union investment fund, which is a five crore fund run by students and students can invest in each other. Oh, so they get this experience of being fund managers exactly. while on campus. While on campus. So I think two of the students are going to get, I think like five or six lakhs each just to build their, continue building their channel. Right. And then of course, when they, when the time comes for them to go outside, we connect them to you know, the VCs in our network. There are a few VCs who teach at Masters Union. In fact, if you talk about 8. Network, I think three or four professors of Masters Union have actually invested in that company. So what kind of student, A, are you looking for? And B, linked to that, what kind of student or, or potential employee or potential co-founder is your recruiter looking for? Yeah. So we need students who are okay with being very uncomfortable in life because we are going to push them into very uncomfortable situations. We're going to tell them you have six weeks, you have to build this business. And most people would find that very intimidating or overwhelming. One thing that I found in a lot of the students in India is that they are close minded. Okay. Right. Right. So we need students who are curious, who are open to, you know, changing their minds, who are flexible about, you know, what their potential my life might look like. I mean, right. So people who are open minded. Potential pivoters. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone should be open to pivoting. Fair right. enough. Um, and third is, you know, a genuine love for learning. So one thing that you'll find in Masters Union and as you sort of walk around, talk to students is how curious they are about asking you questions about learning, trying to learn about you. And the way we sort of check that in the application mm, process mm, mm. is is perhaps the most interesting admissions process in the world. In the world. And I'm like challenging any college to come up and say that it's okay, not. Okay, I'm going to just apply for the sake yeah, of it. <laughs> people should just apply to like see what the process is like. Okay. Right? So one of the questions we ask, and I think we might have changed this from last year, is uh, tell us about a new word that you might want to coin with the word tech as a second half of that word. So agri-tech, yeah. fintech. So coin your own new dash tech. tech. space. Hmm. Right. And just write about it. And you know, we've had answers which are so interesting. We have had answers like poop tech. Okay. <laughs> all right. Right. Now, whoever came up with that. Yeah. First of all, has a very good sense of humor. Sure. <laughs> but also sort of went beyond the usual agri-fin and thought of something new. Another question we used to ask was, why does my table creak? Why does my table creak? Huh. Okay. Open-ended question. Okay. Right. And to most students, they would be like, what is this? Like, I mean, I don't know how to answer this. Yeah, yeah. But for, for some, it's like it's, it's opening a window to their world. Imagination, you know? right? Yeah. But so we want students who are open to such uncomfortable questions, which make no sense at first regard. Um, and then so round two is where we do um, uh, a test. But the test in itself is a lot of fun. So last, a couple years ago, we did a scavenger hunt as a test. So we don't do like JE cat tests, which like, you know, give you a lot of stress, etc. We just did a scavenger hunt. You brought them all here physically. No, we said, you know, in your own cities, you can do a scavenger hunt. But but think about how much fun that would be. Yeah. Right? And how much insight that gives it, gives us into about this character. About them. Right. Step three is an interview with one of our masters. Right. And we actually call it the job interview. Because the masters are going to be their future recruiters. Yes, the only yes. one question we ask the master is that if this person were to come to you for a job in a year, would you hire them? Would you hire them? And That's if you it. did, then then we'll hire them. Then we'll hire them. Yeah. Apart from that, what about basic academics? Are you looking at any kind of scores? Are you looking at like a minimum qualification? Or so a because GMAT? of the high number of applications, we have to look at these scores as well. 
but these scores like GMAT, CAT, your class 10, class 12 only account for 33% of the entire decision. And also I'm looking at it as so much personal development because back in the day when I did an MBA, we would have like a communication skills course or we would have like a presentation skills course. Here I'm saying go on to YouTube, man. Just yeah. go create your own content. What is presentation skills in a classroom? It's yeah. like the test is out there in the market. So it's all the skills that we were taught perhaps using, you know, PowerPoints. So if Instagram uh, earned, let's say like 100 billion or 10 billion in ads, Instagram creators earned a lot more than that. Right. So marketing is fully changing. Now, how do you incorporate tech here? Because every single thing that they do uh, needs tech today. You want to produce MBAs for the future. They have to be at least, if not half, if not full, then at least half engineers. Right. Almost, I think, 50% of all of our courses are either tech courses or are rooted in tech. Right. So our finance concentration or major is not called finance. It's called finance and fintech. So we'll actually talk about how, you know, what is Razorpay and what is the back end of Razorpay look like. You know, we'll actually talk about how UPI interacts with Amex. We not only talk about corporate finance and, you know, discounted cash flows and, you know, banking statements, while we will talk about that. We'll talk about that in context of the new fintech world, right? Um, our marketing is called digital marketing uh, because how many companies are putting up hoardings? Absolutely. It's that, that time is yeah. finished, How right? many people are even reading the newspaper, let alone advertising exactly. in it? Exactly, exactly. It's all about creators. It's all about Instagram. It's all about uh, YouTube now, right? So we teach that. Uh, most of our management courses are actually all data courses where you actually learn R and Python and mm. use those to make decisions. Okay. You actually teaching Python yes, here yes, yes, on it's, camp? It's, it's compulsory. Okay. Probably the only MBA program where you're forced to learn R and Python. A lot of students are not happy with this, by the way. Because they're like, I'm engineering, I'm going to MBA, karna, isi to aida, ko na karna padai. <laughs> Tell them, buddy, that's what's going to take that's you far. But we teach R and Python in context of how to use it in business. Right. Right. Not, I mean, in, you know, to develop an app. And how to even get that developer to develop what, what you conceive. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm I'm also a bit of a purist. I've, for instance, taught at IM Bangalore and I've taught at a few B schools. And you talk about practitioners coming and teaching. So my question is, what about that, that core faculty that sort of stitches the whole thing together? Because I somehow feel that these practitioners would come and go. And then do you, do you still have your core in-house yeah, faculty yeah, we as have. well? We have, uh, we, we call them on, uh, faculty in residence. So these are full-time faculty that live on, that essentially are on campus all the time. And and they only teach. Um, so each of our course is co-taught by a practitioner and a full-time faculty. Right? So our full-time faculty brings in the rigor, the right. exam, the, yeah. uh, you know, the sort of making sure everyone's studying, uh, everyone's you know, on top of things. And the practitioner brings in the case study. Right. I mean, he's the case himself. Yes. Or herself. Yes, yes. Because for a student too, I'm thinking as they're listening in, they're, they're looking at this whole thing saying fantastic. But now this practice, this regular teacher of yours who's there and who, who handholds the practitioner, I think that brings in that perfect balance of saying that, you know, this is the structured program while it is largely loosely structured, but there is, there is a flow there is a logic to it and it's going to end up with a certain outcome. What is next? What are you, what, what's your vision in all of this? So, you know, you, you, you're you not here right now, just two years into the thing. Yeah. So, 10 years later? Uh, 10 years is too long. I'll talk about three years first. Um, so, for us, our mission and vision are very, very clear. I think if you ask anyone in my team, they would be able to tell you the same. Um, is that in the next three years, we want to be top 50 business schools in the world. In the world? Right. So that would mean that in five years, we would be at top 50 in the world, right? Uh, just to give you context, the youngest business school on that list today is probably 45 years old. Okay. <laughs> right. So I, I really truly believe that education is not entrepreneurially handled mm -hmm. across business schools. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. That might even be, I might even be talking about Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, right? I feel like there's huge scope for improvement. And I think we bring that energy. We bring that strategic thinking. Right. And when I say top 10, I mean right next to today, number one is Wharton, number two is Harvard, number three, Stanford, then Stern, then Sloan, then LBS, then NCAD. I think we should be number nine um, in in three plus three, six years from, from today. Okay, we're going to watch out for that. But talking about these top schools that, that you are, did you sort of borrow anything from them? Did you borrow people from them? Did you borrow curriculum from them? Did you, did you yeah. sort of pick up? 
I think we picked up like the best of everything mm -hmm. and try to put it all together, right? So some of the best faculty we could find from these colleges, we tried to bring them. Uh, you know, for example, one of the highest rated courses at Harvard is a communications course called the Arts of Communication taught by Professor Mir. So we were able to bring him in. My God, uh, okay. We were able to bring in the chief knowledge officer of NASA to come in and teach about complexities. I saw that class actually. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, wow. I did, oh, yes. Go, yeah. <laughs> he, I think he just finished the course. Um, and, and, and he was amazing, right? And he spoke about mind mapping and, you know, how to sort of make decisions in, in a very complex environment. A lot of our cases are borrowed from some of these universities. A lot of the challenges that we spoke about, we borrowed from Carnegie Mellon or Stanford. So uh, also our team, a lot of our leaders come from you know, what our placement head is from Stanford, our curriculum head is from what. So we were able to bring in these folks and then they bring in their experiences as well. Like a, looks like a great mix, you know, you, you're learning from the giants, you've got the giants in here, plus you're, you know, doing this own innovation, getting them to go out there and experience and feel and actually improve someone's business, learn yeah. technology, uh, get mentored by the person who's actually going to hire them. Uh, day in and day out, brush shoulders with others who've got new ideas and learn from the community. I, I think that's what education is. Yeah. <laughs> right? We have made education about exams and lectures. Yeah. Indian doctors are best in the world. Hmm. So why can't engi Indian engineers or Indian MBAs also be best in the world? And I'm tempted almost to say that I wouldn't mind coming back and doing an MBA yeah, all over again. You should come and teach. <laughs> You've already promised me that you'll be teaching. I will come back and teach for sure. You know, teaching is so close to my heart. Thank you so much. No. Thank you. Yeah, it was, was amazing fun. talking to you today. And uh, like I said, the link is in the description box. You want to apply? I want to apply too. I want to see <laughs> if I get selected. <laughs>